Okay, welcome to another episode of the Regenerative Health Podcast. Tonight, I'm sitting down with Brian, Dr. Brian Curley, uh, who also goes by the name of Seed Oil Disrespector on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Good morning. Well, well, well let's start out a real, real basic question. Um, what, is, what are seed oils and what is seed oil disrespect? Sure thing. So seed oils are a um, uh, source, uh, a, a food source for fat that is in virtually everything in restaurants and in packaged foods. And unfortunately, a, a lot of folks do cook with them at home. Um, to name a few, you have corn and soy and canola and cottonseed and uh, sunflower. Um, so very common food items that you have heard, uh, in, you know, red read on ingredients lists and, and, and heard people talk about maybe on the internet and, and in different uh, nutritional circles. Um, seed oil disrespect is a, just a funny term that I came up with and made a Twitter account for. Um, and I think what it did was I think that it gave a name to what a lot of people were already doing. Um, which was not eating seed oils, though this was a growing trend, um, but it was a part of different circles. So I think I, at least on Twitter, um, branded what what I would refer to as like the the Venn diagram of paleo and carnivore and Ray Pete and you know other folks that are doing many different things, but they're also avoiding seed oils. They're also avoiding vegetable oil. And that's why when I made my Twitter account, I had a thousand followers in the first 24 hours. It wasn't because I had the most amazing content. You know, I didn't write some incredible thread for the very first time I posted. I think I posted like, you know, hey, everyone, I'm looking for friends, you know, but it was the it was the branding. It was the name. It was people clicked follow because they said, oh, I'm a seed oil disrespecter, too. So that's what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, folks that don't want to eat that stuff and we can get into that. Yeah. And, and look, you, you coming up to a quite a big following online and or specifically on Twitter. And to me that, that speaks to a, a pretty deep demand or kind of underlying trend that you've, you've basically ridden the wave of that are people who are realizing that there's a, a component that's pretty much in, in all types of processed food and that, as you said, people are using quite regularly to to cook their meals in, that is contributing to disease and, and making them feel less than ideal. So so tell us, how, how did you get into this whole idea of um, identifying seed oils particularly? Because, look, the way I think about um, processed food as a as a aggregate is that there's excess sugar, there's, there's refined grains and excess grains, and there's the seed oils. So, so what, how did you come to single out this specific um, ultra processed food? Um, and yeah, give us a bit of a backstory on that. Yeah, sure thing. So the, the three main categories that you just named, my story and how I came to this is, you know, goes through that, what you just described being refined grains, sugar, refined sugar and vegetable oil. Um, I got into the paleo world, uh, you know, the alternative health paleo world about 15 years ago. It was that, it was that rabbit hole, like a lot of folks, people listening to this right now, you know, just someone curious on the internet, spending way more time than they ever thought they would, uh, researching topics that they find fascinating. And for me, you know, health, health and wellness. And it was, it was through those rabbit holes and those topics regarding, um, you know, the, pathophysiology, where diseases come from, um, that, that inspired me to want to go to medical school, which I just finished residency last year. So it's a pretty, pretty long, um, uh, journey from starting pre-med in 2008 as a, as a, as an adult, I was 25 years old at the time and to finishing residency, um, and now being a practicing physician and I'm, I'm 40, right? So it was a pretty long, pretty long journey there. And along with that journey was researching and, and, um, doing my own independent, you know, research, uh, looking into these topics and educating myself. 
And I boiled me and, you know, a lot of folks boiled the paleo and the ancestral health movement down to those main things being grains, sugar, and vegetable oil. And by the time I started medical school in 2014, I would have told you, and uh, there's a, there's a um, physician blogger who, who labeled those the three Neolithic agents of disease, the NADs, NADs, the Neolithic agents of disease, which I thought was perfect. It was an excellent way of boiling all that, uh, those, that, that down. Um, and I would tell people that I, I think that chronic disease is related to these three exactly how it's hard to tease out, but I would recommend that people minimize those. That would be the, my general approach from a practical end. I would tell people, um, uh, to do like, what would I tell a patient, for instance, when I started residency and I actually, it was just me and, and the patient in the room, I would tell them to do a whole 30 because I know that they, I could just write it down on a piece of paper. They can go home and Google it. They can look it up. And it's a, a brilliant branding of what a paleo diet would be, what an elimination diet would be. And we know, um, uh, through, through, through research and through, you know, hundreds of thousands of anecdotes on the internet, how powerful elimination diets can be for addressing chronic disease and, and food intolerances. And what happened was through re medical school and residency, I put a lot of my extracurricular research on hold. I was pretty busy. I was pretty busy learning a lot of, a lot of new things. They say medical school is like, um, uh, drinking water from a fire hose. And that's, that's no joke. That's real. And I would say that I thought that I had a good middle ground approach to nutrition, right? I was never a hundred percent strict on anything, but like a lot of folks, I thought that I had a good middle ground. And then 2021, I realized I was hypertensive. I had high blood pressure. I'd get it tested at work and it was high and I got a cuff and I tested it at home. And I had that realization at 38 at the time that my middle approach wasn't working. So I, I plugged back in to the nutrition world and those three things that you just mentioned, grains, sugar, and vegetable oil, I, I plugged back into several different folks that I hadn't read in a while, whether it's a podcast or uh, a book or a blog. And I would just check in on them. And I, I noticed that a lot more people were talking about seed oils now, and it did not take long to go from zero to 60. Like I very quickly, it was like, it was amazing how I had maybe what a 15% understanding 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I jumped right to, um, the, uh, omega six polyunsaturated fat content, the, um, the, the oxidized linoleic acid metabolites, the relationship with reactive oxygen species this is where I can get real specific and nerdy, right? With the insulin resistance and sunburn and oxidized LDL and, you know, ferrotosis, you know, the, the oxidation with, um, with iron, right? I it, just, one thing after another, it was just. It was exciting. It was exciting because if you asked me a decade ago, I would have said, yeah, something grains, sugar, vegetable oil, there's something there, omega six, omega three balances, you know, something more of a, what, what someone who is not a physician or someone who is not, um, those were the talking points that a lot of folks would have had 10 years ago, pretty common paleo talking points. But my, my mind was just, it was just fireworks with all this new information. And what I realized was that out of those three things, vegetable oil is toxic, not just not ideal, but it's, it's toxic to everybody. And overnight, almost after updating my own understanding, the way I would talk to patients changed forever. I could no longer recommend a paleo type elimination diet. First, I could no longer recommend, re recommend that first. I'd recommend every patient avoid seed oils completely and as much as possible. And that would be step number one. And that was the, the, the qualitative shift that happened when you compare my, all the time I spent over a decade ago. And I boiled that down to those three things. 
it wasn't working for me. My own way of, <laughs> you know, the 80, 20 approach. And then I realized that, that, you know, that, that you have to have a, you have to be strict with seed oils because it's easy to, to overdo them. Yeah, definitely. And the way I, I think about it is, you know, people know that sugar is harmful, you know, in excess amounts. People are aware that if they eat too many grains and, and, and floury foods, that that's not good for health. But I, I think seed oils are the that third component, that maybe that third leg of the stool that a lot of people don't realize, one, how much they're ingesting relative to those other um other foods and two how much they're negatively impacting health and the 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 reason for both both of those is one i think that there's there's been a policy of uh informational um, dare i say propaganda over the past 60 years and it's to do with the demonization of animal fats um that has installed seed oils as a, a preferential uh, alternative in form of dietary fat um, and so that that's i think the main reason why people are ambiguous about why why they're harmful but two that they're, they're, they're very neutral so that people often aren't actually aware that they're ingesting a food that contains canola or sunflower oil so 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 what's your take on on that i i really feel like you've done such good work in publicizing the harm of these oils that isn't as obvious as the other two um, ultra processed food classes. So it, it's just, it's just in everything and it's hard to, it's hard to overstate that. Um, you know, some of the examples that I've used that would be more relevant for folks in the U S you know, you order Papa John's, which is a, a, a delivery pizza place and the, the garlic sauce that you would dip your pizza in is pure soybean oil, right? And so I, I, I use examples like that because it's, it's visual. Um, someone could immediately say, oh, I remember the pizza we ordered last month and I did that, you know, that's just pure soybean oil, mayo, pure soybean oil, right? These, 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 um, these everyday items that people can conjure in their head, or it's just 15 feet away from them in their, in their refrigerator, or it's something that they just ate. I, I want, I want to use these images in order to educate on just how common it is, right? And it's easy, it's easy to do comedy with seed oils because it's related to every malady, it seems, right? every, every negative condition, right? I'm, I mean, I'm, you, Taco Bell, right? That's a, that's a pretty famous uh, um, fast food place in, in the United States. And one of the jokes for years has been Taco Bell and an upset stomach or Taco Bell and to be frank, diarrhea. Well, I mean, I made the observation. I was like, Hey, every, every Taco Bell joke is actually a seed oil joke. Right. And you, you have a hard time arguing with me on that. Right. And, and you can just, you can just go down the line, but the, the aha moment for me in terms of the meme ability of this was when I realized that, that the, that the, the, the sunburn phenomenon and by sunburn, I mean, um, quitting seed oils, raising your resistance to sunburn. So eating seed oils and eating a high polyunsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat omega-6 diet, causing people to be more susceptible to sunburn, right? When I, re and like I told you, that qualitative shift I had in my mind, I realized that that was attributed, attributed to, to seed oils. Whereas if you asked me a decade ago, I would have said, I'm well aware that there are a lot of people in the paleo world who report not sunburning as bad. But to me, with my um, my limited knowledge at the time, you know, I, I you know, I, it, the, the time span in between that is a lot of physiology and a lot of um, pathophysiology education. You can look up um, uh, the the mechanism of action of certain, and this is something you should be familiar with as a, as a physician. If, if someone has a bad tick bite, right. And it's erythematous and it's swollen. And you're saying, Hey, you know, here, let me give you a prophylactic antibiotic for Lyme disease, right? Here's doxycycline. It's a tetracycline, but you should stay out of the sun while you're on this because, because it is increased uh, dermal photosensitivity. You're going to sunburn worse. Okay. And then you go, well, why does that happen? You go, oh, no, let me look it up on PubMed. And you do. And what does it say? It says um, singlet oxygen production. 
it's related to oxygenation, right? So the very non-controversial, very well known side effect of doxycycline or tetracyclines to just name one of you're going to sunburn worse. The mechanism of action is this is a similar um, uh, chemical process of what we are talking about here, which is of why excess omega-6, excess polyunsaturated fat in your diet is dangerous with the very um, memeable and sexy example of sunburning worse. So that you, 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 can, you can even tell by the tone of my voice how excited I get about this because three years ago, if I was to talk to someone on the street, if someone is interested, <laughs> a random person or a patient about healthy eating, it was, it was more difficult to bring them in, right? But now when you can use these examples of butter tastes better than soybean oil and you're not going to sunburn as bad, you, you have these immediate examples that you can give people, right? And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because, like you said, everyone knows that excess sugar is not good for you. It's nutrient poor. You don't have to educate people that they shouldn't eat ice cream for lunch every day, right? It's, it's not as nutritious, right? You can debate how dangerous it is, but we all can agree it's not as nutritious, right? You can tell people, don't eat X, Y, Z, it's going to give you cancer. Don't eat that, it's going to give you diabetes. But you tell someone they're, you know, they're going to tan better, right? That, that's sexy. That's something you can put on the cover of a magazine. And it's something you can meme and it's something people can talk about. And it's something that makes people interested in what you're saying at all different levels. And, you know, that's another thing. That's another thing that made me excited. It's a wedge. It's a wedge that you can get in and get people paying attention. And then they go, Hey, I tried that diet. And, you know, because, um, you know, because I, I, I thought maybe I would tan better and then, you know, my A1C is better now, or my, uh, you know, um, my chronic joint inflammation is gone now, or my IBS has improved, or just just incredible things. Yeah, and you're right. People are aware that if they take drugs like the tetracycline class of antibiotics, uh, or something like roaccutane, which is a isotretinoin yeah. medication for severe acne, that photosensitivity is a, a side effect, and, and we are, we tell patients or patients are informed that they need to stay out of the sun. So it, it's a, not a far intellectual um, step to then exactly. take, which is another form of ingested, something that you ingest can affect your photosensitivity. And the effect that you describe is one that I think so many people experience when they finally get that these these excess uh, linoleic acid rich oils out of their diet. I mean, I, I experienced it myself and you just you notice how, how uh, you don't need a sunscreen as much. And, you know, I'm, I'm going down the the sunlight rabbit hole with Dr. Jack Cruz in a, in a podcast series at the moment. Yeah. And we talk about building yeah. a sol solar callus um, with, you know, yeah. graded exposure and sun exposure throughout the beginning of the day, not just, you know, going out in the midday sun and cooking yourself with four hours of UVB. Um, so there's smart ways of using the sun. And I think that avoiding excess omega-6 through seed oil disrespect is critical to 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 that um, process. Uh, I, I wanted to, let's, let's give the listener a high level view so we don't assume too much about why seed oils are, are so harmful. Sure, so they are a, hot, a hyper concentration of a marginally edible food product. Yeah. It is, it, it's a way of turning um, you know, if you're trying to get one of the um, infographics that I mean very often, five tablespoons of corn oil is like 100 ears of corn or five tablespoons of sunflower oil is like 3000 sunflower seeds. Right. So for for your average person, it helps them visualize that you're getting this hyper concentration of something. Right. It's not just squeezing a handful of olives into a bowl or into a cup. Um, and because of that, we are getting levels of a very fine, very peculiar type of fat, omega-6, a polyunsaturated fat, that's in plants. You know, um, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible to avoid. You have trace amounts if you just eat a natural food off of a tree or out of the dirt um, or, or in animal products as well, right? You're going to have, you're going to have small amounts. Um, but when you, when you eat the oil of 100 ears of corn, <laughs> you are, you are eating way too much of this stuff, right? 
So I often get people because people want, right? Your average person wants to get the 80, 20, right? They want to put in 80% of the effort and get, uh, you know, most of the results, right? Not everybody, unless they're suffering really bad, not everyone is going to be completely carnivore, right? Not everyone is going to be strict keto, right? There are a lot of folks out there doing incredible things with, with, with uh, elimination diets and some people are suffering and they need that. So I think it's a beautiful thing to have that available. But part of what I'm doing in my messaging is how could, how could we change society? How could we, how could we um, have tremendous buy-in, right? So some of these ancestral health folks that I've learned from over the last 15 years, I remember a lot of them saying after spending years on it that, look, you're only going to get 10% buy-in, right? I, I think that with what I'm talking about with seed oil disrespect, you could change the ingredients of things. Everything would taste better. People wouldn't even notice. So not only buy-in, you could eventually get ingredients changed and people wouldn't even know. <laughs> they just start getting healthier one day. And in yeah. theory, I absolutely, I absolutely believe that that could be the case, you know? Um, and um, yeah, they're, 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 I could I could go further down that rabbit hole too. But yeah, I think that it's um, uh, you know we're going to have greater buy in with this concept. Yeah, way more and, than and just. Really, yeah, no, I, I love what you've done because it turns things. It, it it uses humor, which is critical for any kind of um, viral or memorable message. Is that we ha we have to use humor, and you and you use humor so so well. And in a in really, really memorable way. But I, I think about the message of, of seed or disrespect. And, you know, from my point of view, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit of a no brainer. And look, I've, I've done talks about the appropriateness of different types of fatty acids to the human diet. And, you know, you go back into the anthropological record and you look at circumstantial um, anthropological data, and there's just so overwhelming evidence that humans were prized animal fat we evolved eating animal fat we derived out yeah. fat soluble vitamins from animal fat it was our chief energy source and then you you come along to the early 1900s and out of nowhere um you know we've got this industrial waste products that have been highly refined and and then you know they're conveniently incredibly profitable to uh, a bunch of corporations and then again yeah. conveniently told that it's some, somehow healthier so it, it, i think about you know the meme um brian you know the meme of the the bell curve where you've got the um caveman with the iq of less than 60 on one yeah, side yeah. and the iq yeah. of greater than 120 the, and the midwit yeah, the midwit the midwit meme so so on the on the the midwit this the uh the really unintelligent person, he understands. It's like no one ate this before 100 years ago. You need 100 years of corn to, to get this much oil. Seed oil equals bad. And then on the the grandmaster IQ level, who people who've done deep research into um, lipid peroxidation products, oxidated uh, uh, byproducts of linoleic acid, you know, oxidation of LDL, you know, you're also r realizing that it's bad. But then it's the midwit. Um, you know, who hasn't done their own research and is just accepting narratives that, oh, no, we, we should eat uh, these heart healthy oils for our cholesterol level and it's X, Y, and Z. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, don't know I, what, what you think about that. Yeah, I've had people, I've had people um, every once in a while, it's not, it's not often, um, that come into my DMs just like immediately angry. It's obviously someone who boiled over and they send me a bunch of research about, seed oils versus you know animal fats or something and um and it, it would it'll just be ridiculous things like improved cholesterol numbers right and and that that's an entire <laughs> you know that's a rabbit hole in and of itself right like what what is good cholesterol and what is bad cholesterol right that's there we, we could do a whole podcast on that right i would have to do a lot of homework and prepare a lot of things right but but you in a in a in a base sense we can say that that is a poorly understood area of, of research, right? Um, and, uh, and widely misunderstood, right? Um, and it's funny how much research out there just use the term like better. It's like, well, are you sure? <laughs> you know, are you sure that uh, just changing total cholesterol is better or just reducing LDL is better, right? There, there's, there's more to it. I think that it's more of a um, qualitative issue than a quantitative issue. Um, so yeah, you're right. There's, there's these midwits who just don't 
question, the, the, their, their curiosity stops, right? Um, and uh, what I find is that you're, you're, um, someone recently posted, they said, you know, modern medicine is good for, you know, um, to read between the lines in their post, the midwits that we're talking about, right? Respectfully. If you have a, you know, if you're a very resourceful person with an internet connection, you probably don't need most of modern medicine because you're going to figure out how to prevent your chronic diseases, right? With what we're talking about, right? And then also on the on the simple side, you have folks who are like, you know, the, this food seems kind of crazy. <laughs> like, I want to avoid that, right? Um, you know, I don't I don't need memes or Twitter or whatever to tell me that um, that uh, you know canola oil seems kind of weird. You know, my 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 average. Uh, patient, right? And I did residency in Eastern Kentucky. So I had, that's Appalachia, if, if, you're, if you're familiar, very, um, um, e e even though West Virginia is known for um, uh, being mainly Appalachia, it's actually Eastern Kentucky has some of the lowest um, socioeconomic, you know, highest um, uh, areas of poverty, right? So I had a lot of patients that were, you know, to, to, to envision um, this almost like, um, uh, 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 you know, American stereotype of works in a factory and lives in a trailer, right? Some of the best people that I've met through residency worked in a factory and lived in a trailer. And when I would bring this up to them, what would they say? They would say, oh, I only use butter and olive oil. <laughs> I, I swear. Work. Your average person, amazing. They would say, that. amazing. They would, but they a lot of them were overweight, hypertensive, obstructive sleep apnea, wearing CPAP, right? But if you were to ask them narratively, they were completely they completely bought in, right? Um, they shop at grocery store, right? And when I brought it up to them, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, a butter and olive oil. That's all, that's all we cook with, right? They might have actually had margarine and not realized it. They might have had fake olive oil because a lot of olive oil is fake. They go to restaurants and they eat seed oils and they buy packaged food and has seed oils in it. But narratively, they were already buying in. So I think that we're not only are we in a situation now where where people will buy into this, um, but they think that they already have. So we need to educate them on how this stuff is in everything, right? And find ways of getting packaged food in restaurants to use better alternatives, which is difficult, but it's not impossible. Um, you know, there, there are ways. Um, I know Chef Andrew um, Gruel in California, who has some restaurants. Um, I've talked to him a little bit. He, he said that, you know, some of this stuff can even last longer and, and, um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's cost effective ways of doing it. Right. And, you know, in, in the position that I'm in now with what I do, I would like to work and be more of a, of a, of a activist and how can we improve this over time? You know, I feel like I have my, my, my mission now for the next few decades almost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so someone, someone asked me, um, uh, uh, you know, what, what my career goals were, right. So, someone who has no idea what I'm doing on the internet. And, um, and this might even be before I started the account. And I remember saying something like, I don't know, show up to work, <laughs> right? You know, you, I, 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 went, I went through medical school in my 30s, right? Or I went through pre-med in my late 20s. I went through medical school in my 30s and residency and everything. And, you know, for me, just showing up and having the patient encounters is, is fulfilling. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I love it. Um, but this is now the outlet of something that I can grow with. Like, how can I take what I'm doing now make it exponentially better, uh, bigger and more effective. So, you know, I'm, I'm Dr. Brian Curley. I am the uh, CEDO disrespecter on Twitter and I do not have my own YouTube channel. I do not have a sub stack. I'm not writing anything about this. What I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm taking the most um, salient, the most memeable, the most um, effective talking points and I'm weaponizing them, right? And I'm repeating them and I'm putting them into these, these um, uh, uh, videos and these pictures that you can share. Because I know that if, even if something gets 100 likes on Twitter, 
that might be 10,000 people that, that see that, right? Um, and b- because of how, how things are spread, right? And the vast majority of people on Twitter, they don't smash the like button, right? You know, I get, I get DMs from people and it's like, you know, they created their account in 2011 and they've got no tweets, <laughs> you know, they've just been lurking for the last, you know, many years. Um, and, uh, so it's great. I, I love it. I, I love, um, I love to have this output and, uh, this outlet and, um, you know, I'm excited to do more, um, which, um, you know, quick, quick segue for that. We could talk about at some point, you know, we're doing the CD app S D E D Y. Um, to help people identify and find seed oil free food, right? Um, nice. At a very base level. The, the, the goal is, is for um, normies to be able to uh, identify what doesn't have seed oils in it, right? And it's not going to be perfect food, right? This isn't, um, you know, uh, j- just raw dairy and organ products and raw honey. And, you know, it's not the most base nutrition, but you know, it could save your dad's life. Yeah. You know, it can, it can get your sister off of a medication. It can, you know, it's pretty incredible stuff. Like I, I would say, and this is my bold assertion that, um, complete seed oil disrespect is the 80, 20 of nutrition. Yeah. And, you, uh, if you, yep. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, go on. What we can say, if you completely disrespect seed oils, we could get rid of it. Is most- the, it is. I would say it is it is the eighty the eighty twenty of nutrition, right? Mm. If you want to, because it is toxic. If you want to, um, for the most part, avoid chronic disease, and this is not you know this is not medical advice I'm giving someone right now. This is a general statement. Um, if you want to, for the most part, avoid excess fat gain and general disease, you need to avoid cetals completely, and that's the eighty twenty. Um, I think that there's, I think that people um, vary in their ability to tolerate grains and sugar and keto and, you know, intermittent fasting and all, all these other um, um, uh, uh, ways of looking at how to eat, right? Um, there's tremendous variability. But I would say that I don't think anyone benefits from eating 100 years of corn um, in one sitting at a Mexican restaurant or something. Right now, th- definitely people can tolerate that differently, but I don't think anyone benefits from it. Like I, it, it's just a net, it's just a net negative, right? Um, and uh, so, yeah, that, that that's my assertion is that you know you're you're in the danger zone if you're eating seed oils. Um, yeah, um, I want I want to pick up on a, a couple of threads that you made. Um, one is that unless you're actively disrespecting seed oils, i.e looking and identifying everything you're eating, whether that's at home or eating out and actively choosing an option that doesn't contain vegetable seed oils. Um, For the listener, as that I'll I'll quickly repeat them, that's um, cotton, cotton seed, uh, corn, soy, sunflower, canola, grape seed, um, uh, what else, anything else, Brian, and as well as anything that contains margarine. And if you, unless you're actively disrespecting these, you are and removing them from the diet, you're going to get too much. And I think nothing yeah. uh, en- encompasses that more than uh, this re- a paper that was released by Dr. Ramsden back in two- 2011. And they did a quantitative analysis of the dietary content of linoleic acid uh, in the population. And they basically w- did an analysis and showed that the percentage of calories um, from uh, linoleic acid in society in uh, from 1900 to 1999 has gone up from about less than three percent of linoleic acid as calories to over seven percent so in terms of the, again going back to that midwit uh, mean you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, to, to realize if you've suddenly added in over well, suddenly by meaning over the period of 100 years uh, uh, you've more than doubled tripled the content of uh, linoleic acid in the diet and it's linked to all these health problems through the mechanism of uh, oxidated uh, products of, of linoleic acid metabolism, then, I mean, you don't have to have a, a rocket science degree to realize that, that that's harmful and that that should be um, removed. The the other point I it's want to make... Novel. Was, sorry, go on. It's novel. I think that's the most important point to make is how novel that is, how unique that is. Mm. Um, it, how, how 
biologically active it is. And like you said, we've gone from 2% of calories to 8%. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, in some, in some folks, it's, 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 in, it's incredibly large. Um, but you know, that is, that's not a minor thing um, to change, to change the diet that, that dramatically. Right. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I, I agree with you that from a dietary point of view, the best thing we could do to reduce the incidence of chronic disease um, and improve and reverse symptoms uh, is simply getting that level of linoleic acid back under 3% of, of, to, of total calories. And uh, I guess we, we talked a bit about this offline is that linoleic acid is an essential fatty acid biochemically, which means that your body needs to ingest it externally for uh, yeah. correct, correct bodily function. But what I would as assert, and you would as well, Brian, is that this is more than made up by a regular healthy diet that that even mm -hmm. a carnivore would, would get. There's no, I'm not aware of an essential fatty acid deficiency um, that, that, that people have occurred because they've got rid of highly refined uh, seed oils yeah. from their diet. I mean, is that something you've ever heard of? No, no. I mean, it's... It, it, you would, you'd have to do that in like a laboratory setting, like a crazy, um, you know, it just, just eating, like, like I said earlier, just eating something off of a tree or out of the ground or, or, uh, an animal product, you know, you're going to get, um, you're going to get trace amounts, right. Um, so or at least, uh, en enough to do the bodily functions that it would, it would need to be. And I think it's even, it's even debatable, um, whether or not it's essential. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a cascade of, of uh, different products that it can become in, in inflammatory cycles, you know, an inflammation, you know, just to, to, to uh, talk on that for a moment is not, it, it's a normal process, right? Um, it's part of the cycle of life, right? If you, uh, um, you know, if you sprain your ankle, right. Um, and, uh, this is something that you, you've gone over in your training, right? What, what happens is it becomes, swollen and red and painful right and it's uh you know um it it's a normal part of the healing process right and then a year later um as long as you don't have any significant damage right you're, you're not gonna have any of that stuff right so it's this you know inflammation is a, is a normal thing but then when it when you're when you're lopsided to speak simply right when you are um uh uneven and unbalanced um, then that's when you're, when you, you're in a situation where you, um, have chronic inflammation, right? It, it's, it's simply, um, too much of one thing or too, or too much of something. Right. Um, and which is why, you, you know, you, you can, you can get real specific and talk about, you know, oxidized omega-6 and, and the different antioxidants that we have in our body, like, uh, glutathione or, or other things, you know? Um, and, uh, so, you know, Biochemically, it's easy to draw these out <laughs> for folks. Yeah. Um, but what what you were saying earlier, I want to speak on um, about uh, how we need to get we need to get society back under that three percent of calories. the The big food companies themselves, certain folks um, in the uh, um, in those structures, are aware that omega six is is problematic. Um, I, I would say in this, in this, uh, situation, um, and that's why part of the reason why they're developing these high oleic formulations, right? When they say oleic, they're referring to the monounsaturated fat. They're not doing this because they're excited about oleic acid because they're excited about monounsaturated fat. They're making these formulations because they want to minimize the omega six, right? And it's plausible that they're even going to get soybean oil to a low percentage, right? One of my jokes, which is probably true, is that the mainstream is going to admit that omega-6 is a problem as soon as we have a low omega-6 soybean oil, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it just wouldn't surprise me. Like that, that's, that's, you know, it would, when, when you're talking about an industry that worldwide is what, $300 billion or something, there's, there's going to be at least a certain level of information control, right? Somewhere. So, you know, but I, I, it, it's good enough for humor, right? Um, but, but, you know, if I was protecting a $300 billion industry, I would be really careful with that too, you know? Um, yeah. But I, I, I think there's, there's layers to this. 
I don't think it's as simple as like an easy conspiracy, right? Um, I think most things are attributable to momentum and not malice. Um, but, you know, there's certainly a lot of bullshit at the same time, right? Yeah. And we could play the, you could, play the, you could write entire books and play the game of who, who knew what when, right? Um, you know, uh, but there's, there's great folks like, um, Dr. Kate Shanahan and Tucker Goodrich and Nina um, Teicholtz, um, or Teicholtz, sorry, I forgot how to pronounce her name, um, who, um, uh, who wrote uh, Big Fat Surprise, who have gone through where a lot of the shenanigans have, have happened over the decades, right? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a great, sorry, it's, Brian, it's a great opportunity to reinforce that point, which was the reason why these oils were introduced in the first place was never to do with nutrition. The, the, the initiation of this process, as far as I'm aware, was the adulteration of the lard supply with cotton yeah. seed oil. Yeah. Pro, and yeah. that was even in the late 1800s. And then in the early 1900s, Crisco um, was released, which was a hydrogenated cotton seed oil. And that was sold because it was a, a byproduct of, of the cotton seed industry. So all, all the way up till now, we've never had – this hasn't been a dietary imposition based on health. It's simply been a, a function of corporate profit. So to say – um, to that that idea that once we get a low linoleic acid, soybean, canola, grapeseed oil, um, I, I agree completely. The narrative the narrative can and will shift on a dime, and oh, in yeah. this modern day and yeah. age, we've we've seen examples of that in 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 other areas of society where suddenly you know now now we're at war with Eurasia. You know the, the narrative changes and the propaganda machine yeah. switches, and suddenly you know the gas yeah. you've been completely gaslit, but um, it, it's it's interesting how um, while it's still convenient for everyone and profitable for everyone to eat these seed oils that they're heart healthy, they lower cholesterol, um, they're 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 all all good. And and Brian, I actually this reminds me because let's go, again go back to that midwit midwit meme. There are people in science which are so called seed oil apologists, and by that I mean doctors and researchers who are towing the line or asserting that seed oils aren't in fact harmful. And there's one in particular, uh, Dr. Ids, I'm not sure if you've come across his content uh, on on Instagram. Uh, he's, he's someone who goes through longitudinal data, again, associational, observational data based on things like food uh, recall questionnaires, which is pr uh, prone to amount, immense amount of bias. Um, and then asserts that these high linoleic, linoleic acid oils are in fact not uh, unhealthy. Um, what, what is your take or what's your opinion on, on, I guess, people and scientists within the medical establishment kind of holding the line in terms of, and asserting that these oils aren't in fact harmful to health? So, I, I'm going to be real ballsy. Um, you know, I'm the comedy guy, so I'll just say it. Um, I don't think that nutrition science has been tried because – you need to detox people off of seed oils to properly compare um, a population with a evolutionarily um, a normal level of omega-6 to a seed oil level, right? Because we know that this accumulates in tissues and we know that it has a long half-life and it can take like, what, five, six, seven years or something to get out, right? And when you look at also the, the pathophysiology of this, there is likely certain thresholds where this um, tissue concentration uh, has its certain pathophysiological effect, right? So at what tissue concentration do you have oxidized LDL and, you know, um, uh, macrophages and foam cells and, um, uh, you know, uh, plaque formation and coronary artery disease? At what tissue concentration do you have, um, you know, omega-6, omega-3 um, competitive inhibition, um, you know, uh, in, in, in your retina and causing, you know, macular degeneration, you know, what, what I'm sure that it's, I'm sure that it's different. Th that, that's what's, that's what's going to be real interesting is when, when we can really start to tease this stuff out, right? You know, we, we can tease out that certain diseases were either didn't exist at all or, tremendously rare before the uh, the advent of the industrial diet right but now it's like okay like 
you know, at what point do these things start to catch on? So you could change someone's diet, right? But you, you have to detox them, right? And you also have to be extremely strict that they're not eating this. And like you said earlier, like we talked about is that you need to be, um, uh, if you're not actively disrespecting seed oils, you're eating too much of it, right? And it, you'd also say, this is important for people listening. Every single diet out there, and by diet, I mean a category. You could say keto, you can say carnivore, you can say anything, just name it, right? Look up top 10 popular diets. All of them can screw this up, right? Notably, and I, 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 I catch shit for this, notably carnivore and um, monogastric animals, right? People who eat animal products and they eat a lot of lard or pigs and chickens, which monogastric animals bioaccumulate um, in their adipose tissue, uh, omega-6, right? Trem tremendously. <laughs> and you can just look at, look at, a, you know, a chicken and you know, a hundred years ago compared to now. Um, and I'm sure it's similar with, um, uh, uh, with, with pigs. Um, they are also, um, accumulating omega-6. Now that is, and I'm, this, this is one area that I would say that I would caution carnivore from eating high omega-6 diet, but the, the pathophysiology of a high omega-6 diet in the absence of carbohydrates is unique. It's unique compared to that of, 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 um, of that with carbohydrates, right? Uh, but I'm going to be humble enough to say that, you know, I, I, I think that's an area that needs more research. I just wouldn't do it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can give some anecdotes, but it's harder to talk tremendous shit. Um, it, it's easy to talk a lot, talk a lot of smack with, you know, the, the known body of every single ology out there and you go, okay, well, that ology is completely, uh, um, all of the research is done in the context of a high mix six diet, <laughs> right? Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting, um, you know, um, uh, future area of study, which is low carbohydrate, like, like the, like the low carb, high fat, you know, hyper responders that they're now, they're now uh, yeah. researching. I'm interested in the folks that are eating high omega six, right? Because I think they're still oxidizing their LDL. I'm sure. Yeah, um, but it's a, yeah. Yeah, two two points on that, um, and it, I think there's layers of effect modification that is happening because, in reality, no one or very few people are eating only a high linoleic acid diet, but they're eating low carb and and, and low sugar. Like the the, the people yeah. in the trailer yeah. park, the patients in your trailer park that you treat. They're eating the seed oils. They're always in conjunction with refined sugar, with refined grains. You, I mean, you have a massive amount of glyphosate um, contamination in your food in the U.S. Um, due to yeah. genetically modified uh, the, the the prevalence of genetically modified grains, corn and soy. So, so there's it's never in isolation, and um, that that I guess might be a question that. Uh, you know, a, a naysayer might say, well, hang on, Brian, um, why is it specifically the, removing the oils is so important? Because when people do improve, they're also re removing the, the grains and, and, the, and the carbs. So um, I guess, I mean, you can answer that quickly now, why, why you think that is uniquely uh, effective. Could, I'm sorry, could you reword that? Like so as in um, what I meant was there's, there's so many other, there's things going on in, in that the seed oils are, always in, in conjunction with the other refined food products. But what, what your message is saying is that um, you can just get rid of the seed oils, you can get your linoleic acid mm -hmm. level back down under 3% of calories and all things constant, you will improve dramatically just removing that that dietary effect, um, that so dietary component. Just, just like in the early days of paleo on the internet, um, you know, I don't have... Uh, um, you know, I don't have like a bunch of studies that I can point to, but there are folks doing this and getting results. Um, I can anecdotally give my own story that, um, you know, I, I said that a year and a half ago I was hypertensive, um, and now I'm not, and I eat sugar and I eat carbs. I eat, I eat a American diet, I would say, right. Um, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have some toast with eggs. I'll eat, uh, you know, hamburger meat for, for lunch with some rice or some potatoes or something. We'll cook steaks for dinner or we had taco bowls tonight, right? We had some ground beef with some rice. 
Um, I, uh, I had a, a you know, a, an adult beverage. I had a cider earlier. Um, you know, um, we, we went and got pizza yesterday and some ice cream. Um, you know, I, I just, th that doesn't sound like a diet <laughs> at all. Right. <laughs> and I, I don't have 6% body fat. Right. But I am no longer skinny fat like I was before. I, I need to get tested. I don't even remember what my body fat is right now. Um, but I'm slim. I'm, I'm 5'10 and 160 pounds. Uh, and where I used to, I think I used to sit around like 170. Um, and um, uh, yeah. So yeah, you know, we can, my, my wife bakes at home. Yeah. So I'm eating carbs, I'm eating sugar. So you know, I think we're, we're, we're building the, uh, the, um, you know, we're, we're building the anecdotal stories now, but th this being a new thing, it's going to take a while before you actually see more research of like, you know, uh, this, you know, this group did specifically eight low omega six for three years or something. That's going to be tremendous. I'd, I'd love yes. to be able to see that one. Day. Yeah. And we will. Yeah. We will. yeah. Um, you could have that out there with paleo type diets now. There, there's a lot of that. It's, it's tremendous. Um, yeah. It's, it's hard to ignore, but it is, it's, it's hard to adopt for most folks. Yeah. Well, epistemologically, it's a fascinating point. And what, what you just described is you're, it sounds like you're just eating a, a pretty regular diet, but you're, you're avoiding yeah. seed oils. And when I think back on the internet, on Twitter, people post these memes of, you know, what happened 1960s beach, everyone was thin, yeah. you know, yeah, post 19. Yeah like 2020 everyone's obese and you know you it, it's a really critical uh point because when that percentage of linoleic acid hockey sticked that r was really coinciding with um with, with the uptake of of seed oils and look I, I'm, I'm talking to jack cruz and we're going deep on non-native emf and and he will tell you that it's related to the concentration on uptake of technology and blue light exposure and um, and I, I definitely think that's a contributing factor. But this podcast, we're talking about diet. And I think undoubtedly, as Brian has said, the, the overwhelming factor in terms of initiating uh, insulin resistance, contributing to obesity um, and visceral fat deposition is um, is the omega-3, sorry, the omega-6 oils. I think that light is a very close second from seed oils. And I, and I mean that practically because you can have you can have the bet you can live in the forest and have no technology and if you're eating soybean oil <laughs> right you're, you're not going to be doing well right um but i would say that after that because you know it's, it's akin to like drowning right like you're just you're just in this very toxic <laughs> you know uh, uh that's a terrible analogy but you know i i i, I use these analogies to to evoke emotional responses from people, right? With comedy. Um, but a close second after that is, is, um, circadian rhythms. So I, I would, I would say that tremendous. I would absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure and, Dr. Um, Dr. Dr. Cruz, Dr. Cruz would probably, uh, disagree with me, but, um, he, he, he would probably find a way saying that electrons and light explain why seed oils are the problem. And I, I would, I would likely believe him, um, because, um, I, I, I he, he, He's, he's a tremendous person. Yeah. yeah, he's a smart guy. And look, I've 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 talked to that about um with that that topic on uh people who have who are followed Cruz for a while and, and I believe that one explanation is that seed oils are rich in deuterium and deuterium for the listener and I, I, I recommend everyone to, to go back and listen to my on my interviews with Dr. Cruz. But deuterium is essentially a, a heavy hydrogen form and when ingested or or when it's um uh, it basically gums up your ATPAs, which is a protein in your mitochondrion that uh, mm -hmm. allows you to to make energy. So, so perhaps that that's one of the mechanisms. Um, but yeah, interesting. And look, that that again reinforces this idea that in the modern world we've got layers upon layer of additive uh, component causes that are that are all interacting. And yeah. mo most people are doing everything wrong, unfortunately, because the norm is 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 poor health. Uh, I, I really yeah. wanted to emphasize a point, Brian that you mentioned earlier, which is, this is not a immediately toxic substance in that you could eat seed oils for, um, 
you know, ha- having been completely healthy, you could probably eat seed oils here and there for a couple months and not maybe you, you, you gain a little bit of weight. But it's really the multi-year ingestion of supra evolutionary levels of linoleic acid that are really um, causing the, yeah. the long-term inflammation damage. Um, that, that, that's yeah, at least how I, how I think smoking. about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Similar to like smoking um, and, you know, the, the you know, forming cancer over decades. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and, it, and it's easy, it's easy to overdo it too. Um, you know, that, that's, that's one of the themes of this, of this discussion right now is how it's easy to overdo. Um, and, uh, but, um, and, and, and just the cumulative nature of it. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to overdo it. And then that, that can add up, right. Just, just eating Chipotle on the weekends. Right. That's, you know, that's a lot of grape seed oil or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, I had, I, I had, I had a guy early on message me, you know, he, he was a, a military veteran and, um, you know, he did CrossFit as, as you know, I, and I bring that up specifically because a lot of folks that have done CrossFit were exposed to excellent nutritional information. Like, you know, the paleo movement really took off f- from there. So, you know, he found, a lot of great authors and, and, and ancestral health people there. He's a, he's, he's his own chef, right? He, he cooks for himself, but he would casually eat Chipotle on a weekend and he would casually eat this here and there, this 80, 20 approach, right? That most folks want to, to live like, live, you know, um, people want to enjoy their lives. So he took my advice and went strict and, um, and within a month, his, his, IBD, so his irritable bowel disease, his Crohn's disease. Uh, inflammatory like, bowel disease. Yeah, inflammatory bowel. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, what did I say? Yeah. I- irritable inflammatory bowel. bowel. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but the inflammatory, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Inflammatory bowel disease. Um, he would wake up with, with cramps every night and he couldn't even drink coffee. And he was like, you know, giving up that Chipotle on the weekends to, to be specific, right? And to give up those chips and to give up that you know, random cookie at work that probably had soybean oil in it, just making that change. He no longer is in pain. He can drink coffee now, you know, and, 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 you know, this was, this was a guy with a high food intelligence, right? This is a guy who, who made great decisions, but he was lax with certain things. And, um, um, and it, and it's incredible. And, you know, and I've, I've even had some, uh, I'm not going to name drop. I've even had some popular people in the paleo world message me and say, Hey, um, uh, you know, your emphasis on the omega six, it, it sounds like that has a lot of, um, uh, and it's not just me, but other folks, the, the, those of us who are emphasizing omega six, you know, there, there seems to be something to it. If, if they have people who follow them, who have messaged them and say, Hey, look, I, I, I hear about this omega six thing now. So I've, tweaked my diet with that. For instance, someone who's strict carnivore and they stop eating chicken, right? And then their symptom as as an improved, right? They're, you know, debilitating constipation as an example, right? Like I am a paleo warrior. I'm doing great. And I eat chicken because chicken's paleo, right? Um, and then I cut it out and then boom, you know, it's like I unlocked, right? And so I, you know, I think that, um, I think the reason why beef paleo, right? Beef carnivore, um, works so well. And, and part of it is because it's, it's, um, uh, ruminants are, are, uh, resistant to that buildup of omega-6, right? They're, 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 they're different than the, the monogastric. Definitely. The yeah, no, great, great point. Um, and again, it's something I like to emphasize, which is fully grass fed meat and regeneratively raised meat because the animal is eating its natural species appropriate diet. It has a rumen and it is able to process and build a food for you that has an, a, a more evolutionarily consistent amount of linoleic acid in its tissue. And look, I, I work with uh, or good friends with a local regenerative farmer um, and the pasture pork that he makes, it tastes completely different to to the the CAFO fed uh, pork that you get from a factory farm, and we're going to we're looking at doing uh, some testing so we can actually verify that percentage amount of of linoleic acid uh, in the actual um, pork yeah. pork meat because it's going to it's going to be critical because I um, and again these chickens that they, they are fed 
their, their pastured, but we would ideally like to get a, a, a number on that so we can recommend people eat that, those types of foods. Um, it's, it's a really good point, Brian, because I think especially people going carnivore might might think that they're making a healthy option by just eating you know any kind of meat. But if you're buying commodity chicken, you're buying commodity pork, commodity yeah. bacon, you're, you're not doing your health any any favors. And you know, in addition to the the linoleic acid, you're probably getting antibiotics. You, you might be getting growth hormones, and God knows yeah. what else. Um, it, it, it contamination in that food. So I'm I'm glad I want to I want to do a quick segue. Um, I'm glad you brought up regenerative farming because. Early on in in my memeing, it got boring to just talk about seed oils, right? I, I realized I need to make this a little more three dimensional, and so I thought about you know how do we eat, my wife and I, and what are some recommendations I would make to my patient, right? And how do I fit that into the narrative of what I'm doing? So I say seed oil disrespect and ruminant consumption. <laughs> right? That's the yin and yang of good nutrition, right? You know the avoid this and and um, and emphasize that. Uh, and one of and the segue I wanted to make was that eventually, as we talked about, they're going to make seed oils that are low in omega six. It's going to happen, right? Um, unless unless by some meme magic we were able to just tank their uh, reputation, right? So eventually, the health argument is be is going to minimize. Right. And at that point, the argument we're going to have is an environmental one, soil health, right? And all the different correlates and, and different topics you can talk about there. Um, you know, carbon sequestration and other things too. Um, so we are in a sweet spot now where it's bad for the soil. It's bad for your health. It's high in omega six. You should avoid it. Um, I don't know how, how long we have. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know, but now is the time because those seed oil fields are the ones that need regenerating. Yes. Yes. I love that. that. Very important to my narrative that I'm trying to, I, I you know, if, if, if we can get, you know, 10% of the U S population to be able to repeat exactly what I just said, that is tremendous. It could change the world. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and, incredible. Um, it, 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 I interviewed a, a, a gentleman, Texas Slim, uh, earlier in uh, late, earlier in the year, and he's promoting a, basically a whole lifestyle change, um, part of reclaiming health because the whole process, the whole stack from soil all the way to consumption has been messed with, and we can you know we could go so deep in it, but it starts at you know the monopolization of grains by big agrotech companies that uh, re require the the inputs of, of glyphosate and other kind of herbicides. And then you've got uh, monopolization at, at every level and centralization at every level of, of processed food, manufacturing, refining, you know, uh, commodity, commodity animal um, processing. So, so, so to reclaim the health, um, as, as you just talked about, Brian, it's not enough to um, just, it, what, it helps to disrespect seed oils, but if you can get people to buy into a wholesale lifestyle change, which involves going out on a weekend, you know, get get out as I like to say, get out from behind your keyboard, um, and go and meet your farmer, go shake your farmer's hand, go understand where how he he raises his food, ask him what he's feeding his pastured pigs and chickens, um, start start being an active participant in a new lifestyle that involves conscious consumption, that involves. Uh, environmental stewardship that involves this these whole processes because as you said um you know the narrative will the narratives narratives will change um and the informational battlefield to use a military analogy will um will shift and we as as people and doctors who are wanting the best for our patients we're going to need to respond to that um and i think yeah. advocating the whole lifestyle approach uh, is the most one of the most robust strategies yeah, so I, I look at seed oil disrespect as a gateway drug to even, obviously, I mean, this is, you know, seed oil disrespect, it, it's, it's, it's um, I, you know, I boiled down my knowledge into something very simple that has the biggest bang for the buck, right? But as a it's a gateway drug to better food decisions, right? Um, 
personally, I am not a raw carnivore, right? I just, I just don't eat like that. Right. So I am, um, you know, we, we eat mainly beef, um, and I enjoy seed oil free products, but it doesn't mean we just buy all packaged food that's made with, with good fats. Right. But I would love it if someone who does eat 90% packaged foods that they bought packaged foods without seed oils, because that's, what's going to move the needle on chronic disease and obesity. Right. Um, and the, the, the white pill, you know, the, the, um, optimistic view of this is that um, through the promotion that folks like myself are doing and, and the knowledge of these types of things is going to improve food. It's going to improve fast food, hopefully, um, packaged foods. A lot of people are going to get healthier and they don't even realize it. But this this wave of seed oil disrespect and, and all the different um, the different there's many, you know, there's thousands of influencers to talk about this now. You know, I'm lucky enough to have branded it on Twitter and Twitter seems to be just growing in popularity now. So I feel like we're just getting started. Um, but, um, you know, th 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 there's going to be a lot of folks that go, hey, I realized my mayonnaise was pure soybean oil. And then two years later, I'm eating raw liver, right? Or something along those lines, right? Or, or, or I, you know, I now actually care about the raw milk laws in my state, right? You know, there's absolutely a, a, um, a, a, a you know, a, a, a progression. stepwise progression. People getting, yeah, progression. Uh, and, and so, you know, I'm excited that 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 Cito's respect is so accessible to to regular folks, to to normies, right? To just just your average person out there. And from the very beginning, when I made these memes, it was like, look, you're on the internet, you're on Twitter. If you're even paying attention to an account like mine, you already buy in. But you could send this meme to your dad or your brother or your whatever, and you could get them paying attention to this topic. I knew from the very first time I made this, made a meme, I was like, look, this, this could get a hundred people talking about this. Right. You know, I, I thought that I'd maybe have like, you know, maybe 1500 followers, but I didn't know I was going to break that within a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's just been, it's just been surreal. Um, uh, and, you know. and I, I want to give you, I want to really give you credit and because the simplicity of your message and the ability that you've had to package a quite quite a complex biochemical and physiological uh, process, which is the toxin of toxic effect of cumulative decade exposure to oxidative linoleic acid metabolites. Like, I mean, yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah, but the, really the, the worried, way yeah. that you've been able to package that into such a digestible form and then deliver it like an absolute, you know, a bullet essentially uh, it's been incredible and and i've interviewed dr sean o'mara and he's really framed metabolic dysfunction and metabolic diseases visceral fat it's a it's a problem of visceral fat and the simplicity is so important i think it is critical for basically uh heuristically slipping these concepts into the into the, the subconscious and allowing people to access it access access them um easily so um yeah i just want to really really give you credit because it's in as you said it's the it's the gateway drug it's a thin edge of the spear it's something that's so important and then it's going to be facilitating the next steps which is eating more regenerative meat you know etc x y and z yeah because you can't you can't talk about omega-6 and not talk about the difference between beef pork and chicken i mean it's like it it, it fits together so beautifully it you know i i uh you know i joked early on if i don't know if you ever saw the, the movie the blues brothers but it's like you know we're on a mission from god right it's like it's like this this narrative fits together so well it's like all right let's do this you know like you know it, it's just it, it's just beautiful like it's it's beautiful that you can make a joke about butter and then it's easy to segue into like soil health <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like uh, and which is something I need to mean more. Like I, if you've got any of those nice photographs that show like the nice thick roots compared to the real thin roots, like I need, I need more of those images to mean that more, you know? Um, cause I, I want, I want, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I don't get too complicated. I, I want to bring people there slowly, but, um, yeah, that, that's definitely something I want to, 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 to mean more <laughs> yeah yeah no it's uh it's amazing and 
and yeah, I've actually got Jake, my Jake Wolke, who uh, down here in Albury, he's got a picture of his field and, you know, conventionally grazed and kind of regeneratively grazed. And I think, yeah, yeah there could be different times of the year. So sometimes it's an unfair comparison, but the, the effect of regenerative yeah. farming is just in- incredible. And, and what you mentioned earlier is think about the potential of regeneratively farming or that land that is currently dedicated to corn, corn and soy or wheat. A sorghum. It's depressing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, depressing and exciting. I mean, let's flip it. Let's flip out that that. Yeah, well, it's yeah, depressing. Yeah, the at, the, at, right. at the moment, the land is being raped by uh, you know commodity inputs, and you know squeezed. You know, the microbial community is microbial uh, life is being you know slowly killed. But uh, optimistically, we can we could imagine if that land was then used to regeneratively graze cattle or what, whatever yeah. else. Um, that I think that the, the, you know, the, the genie is out of the bottle and with the, a lot of these ideas, right. Even, even King Charles, right. Was it King Charles the third, right. I, I don't know <laughs> of, of England. Um, I've heard in interviews him talk about savory, right. I've heard him talk about regenerative farming and, uh, and, you know, a lot of folks in power, nod to these things but just 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 to even hear him you know hear, hear someone uh with that much influence be able to talk about these things um you know it's it's difficult to to tuck that away like if anything yeah. this is just going to continue to grow um yeah you know and look look at you know for instance um you know look at a country like uh El salvador and bitcoin right and I'm not I'm not a big crypto person, right? I, I've I've learned more about it through what I'm doing with this. But to use this as an example, I think what you're going to have is you're going to eventually have certain nations that are doing this more and that have um, uh, um, uh, good outcomes with these kind of things. And um, and you know, there's a, there's more. We really need to start hammering these envir- environmental issues more because you could make them, you know, it's a cheesy term, but you could make these by bi- you can make these issues more bipartisan, right? You can make these issues, um, you know, less polarizing, right? Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm a practicing physician, right? So I don't get very partisan on in my jokes. Like I, I make some somewhat political jokes, but it, it's, it's never, you know, I, you know, I say like, you know, I'm not trying to own the libs. I just want the libs to own some grass fed water. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and when I made that comment, like someone, someone commented like, you know, Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a live and I have some butter and it's like, good. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I want us to agree on these things. Cause as soon as we start to agree on food, man, there's no going back, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, but part, part, one of the main reasons why we're doing the CD app is because the big food companies are not going to embrace the seed oil free label like they did with gluten free because that was a you know you could find another cheap filler to put in food um, i remember learning about you know gluten in 2007 or so and by 2010 i forget not too long after there was a gluten free aisle at my grocery store I'm like oh wow that was quick you know like they really you know in terms of adopting a trend right uh, the market responding to growing interest in a certain thing, right? It was purely done because they knew people wanted to go in there and buy that. Well, we now, and you can see in the Google analytics, the, um, uh, I don't know which way I'm going on the screen here, but going straight up in terms of the people that are interested in seed all free, but you're not going to see it. Certain niche things, masa chips, other things are going to say seed all free, but these large companies are not going to do it. What are they going to do? They're going to put butter on the cover or, or olive oil on the cover or on the, on the label. But there already is low trust in these things because as I've memed, it'll say butter contains no butter. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Right. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to having the app help, you know, average people like identify this stuff and hopefully it'll be out maybe, maybe like next month or so. You know, yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. Well, let, let me know. Cause already down here in Aubrey, New South Wales, where, We've got, um, you know, a couple, one, what couple places that are offering seed, seed oil free uh, options, and I, and I think really it's, it's as simple as go into your local restaurant and ask them, you know, which options 
don't contain seed oils or can you can you cook these with coconut oil butter olive oil ghee tallow yeah. and eventually you know i hope restaurants will have a little logo which is equivalent to vegan or vegetarian or gluten free which is just seed oil free right. and um you know that that would be a massive step in the right direction yeah you're you're going to see something like that i mean there's there's still i mean there's, no, there's already you know, in, in hot spots like Manhattan, right, in New York City, you're, you're having more restaurants pop up that are very vocal and forthcoming with being seed oil free. And, you know, those are, um, you know, there is something to be said about trends and trendy areas and, you know, trendy cities where they can set the pace for things. And then before you know it, you know, you're in downtown wherever, anywhere in the country or anywhere in Europe or other places or Australia and, you know, it, it becomes something that's, that's, it's notable, right? You know, this, this, what in the last couple of decades, this whole farm to table thing, and they want to let you know that that carrot came from wherever, right? Well, people are now asking, what is this cooked in? <laughs> what is the fat? Right. And, uh, and that's what this trend is going to be. Yeah. Epic. Well, um, Look, Brian, it's been a great conversation and we've, I mean, we haven't even touched the surface of a whole heap of topics. So I have to get you back yeah. on and we can talk about, about a whole bunch of other stuff. But um, yeah, thanks thanks for sharing your time. Look, give, give us, give the listeners some, I guess, real real takeaways in terms of practical seed or disrespect But before you go. Sure. So if this is all really new to you, Start reading ingredients labels, right? Um, you can follow me, Seed Oil Disrespector, at Twitter. Uh, my wife made a very simple, easy to follow website, seedoilrebellion.com, um, that can tell you what's good and what's bad. Uh, we have an app coming out, CD, S E E D Y, CDapp.com, um, that's going to help you identify at your grocery store what to buy. Um, people are going to be able to submit items too. So, you know, we anticipate that we're going to have pretty good coverage quickly. We have some major American grocery stores to start, but, you know, with community submissions, it's something that's going to be tremendous rather quickly. And it's something that you and your, you know, your family should be able to, uh, you know, identify, you know, how do you get your dad to stop eating regular soybean mayonnaise, right? Uh, well, maybe he needs to know what other options are out there, right? Um, so, those are some websites and some resources. You know, if you're at a restaurant and you're just trying to survive out there, you know, avoid fried food. You already knew that, right? Avoid fried food. Um, dresses and, dre sorry, dressings and mayo. It's just all seed oils, right? Um, but really, you know, if you, if you have any knowledge of like a carnivore approach, if you're out in public or you're traveling, carnivore is a pretty good way of, of surviving. And you can do that with fruit, right? or cheese as well. You know, if, if, if I was stuck on a cruise ship and I had no other choice, <laughs> you know, I'd be eating, you know, hamburger meat and cheese and fruit probably all week. <laughs> right. And that would be my way of surviving. Right. Yeah. Um, great. Seriously, like, like I would just do that. And, and the sad thing is, is, you know, your omelets probably cooked in margarine. So if you want to get specific and say, Hey, do you have butter back there and use the word margarine, say, I can't have vegetable oil. I can't have margarine. Do you have any real butter? There's nothing wrong with asking that. And you always, and if you're going to bring it up, I've worked in a restaurant before. If you want to break the ice, make a joke. Be like, oh, I got this weird thing. You know, sorry to be a pain, but, you know, I can't have any vegetable oil or margarine. Do you have any real butter back there? If you say it like that, they're not going to think you're an asshole. They're going to go, oh, let me look into it, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, and then as long as you're avoiding the fried food and the dressings and the mayo um, and asking about what's cooked in, you're probably avoiding most of it, right? And don't don't feel bad. Just just you know, um, look into it. Yeah, look into fantastic. it. You know, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to end up. A lot of the benefits are front loaded, so you're going to feel so great. Butter tastes better than soybean oil. You're not going to miss anything, um, but you're just going to learn how to survive um, and and navigate around the seed oils. Yeah. Love it. Well, thanks, Brian. And, and it is a, it's a real call to action and it's a, a, a mission that I guess everyone can embark upon. And the, the first of the beginning step is improving your own health. But as we've talked about with things like regenerative farming, the, the implications can be 
you know, global in if enough people take this on, on board and make conscious purchasing decisions and, and, and really encourage the, the uptake of high quality, ethically raised uh, foods. So, so again, Brian, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for all your work you do as the seed or disrespecter. We'll include all everything you've mentioned in the show notes so people can follow you and um, find the CD app and uh, hear about how to prepare and, and, Uh, food that doesn't contain seed oil. So thanks very much and talk again. Thanks, Max.